Hey everyone, hopefully this should be a pretty simple and maybe even a quick video using the Devious Decoder card to actually find out the bitting of a lock so you can make a key. Here's an example of an American lock not bypassable. This is the key retaining version, the non-removable key version. So once we got this open, and it was a real cool movement, uh, someone in the class, actually a student in our class was the one who popped this, and I was like, hey, you popped the challenge lock? Let me, let me go ahead and depin that later, and we can see exactly how we're going to be here. So let's see what our pinning is on this one. Ooh, kind of sticky greasy. Might need a little encouragement, so let's grab a blank to slide through there, hopefully one chamber at a time, to pluck those pins out. Well, not a lot of room, is there? Yeah, can barely get any of those pins. Well, you can get the second chamber, maybe. Jeez. Now, it is fun. You can see the coloration of the pins involved, so we could do some math that way if we had to. That looks like long ago it might have been a green. And we've got a red here. Red on the top, but not on the sides. This lock has seen some service. That was the fifth chamber. Got it in the right spot. There we go. All right. So, what are all of these pins? Now, it's funny. Came out of an American lock, but of course, this is the master M11 bitting. So, what are we going to call these? Well... We can measure them either way on the DDC. This one looks like it's passing through four, but is that just the, the fact that my tweezers are so tight? So when you get pins that are this tiny and you can't actually pick them up easily, what can you do? Well, if you're laying it down, you could just do the tabletop method. So look, if we tried three, we literally can't get it to stick. It's actually jamming on the card, so it's not a three, obviously. Let's knock that down. Maybe. It's a four? Yes. In Masterland, this would be a four, or in American Lock, this would be a five in the first chamber. Now, the next pin's got a little more size to it. Let's see. That can pass through at Master Lock six, which is, of course, American seven. This little teeny guy is going to be hopeless in my tweezers, but I can try it with the tabletop method. Looks like it could be a two. Could be a one. Could it be a zero? No, it's not a zero, obviously. It's getting stuck on the card. We'd call that a one in Masterland or a two in American Land. But this itsy bitsy spider, could that actually be a zero? Yeah. Look at that. We've got a zero cut, very high lift. And then this last one. Could it be? It might be a two. No, it's not a one, but it drops through on the two. All right, so that's a master lock two, American lock three. So four, six, one, oh, two. Let's see if we can make a key for that. All right, we're at the old reliable blitz. Gonna grab our card from master. Now, of course, we're not using large pin because we're not making a door, but we're not using small pin either which, huge thanks to Rubber Band, when I was, I checked out the blanks and everything, I was like, wait a minute, why, why am I invading the shoulder? He's like, you got a Pro Series card? I think that, uh, I think that K-17's a Pro Series blank, the M11. And sure enough, uh, when I came to my senses, I was like, oh yeah, that absolutely is correct. So yes, Master Lock. You, you think of Master Lock as just kind of one product line, but no, there's a whole lot going on there, and we're going to be using one of their Pro Series K-17 blanks. All right, and of course, wouldn't be fun without arcane obscure knowledge. So we've got two different possible depth fields on this one HPC card. Uh, I happen to know it's the tinier numbers for this series of key blank, but yay, locksmithing obscura. Well, we got 46102. All right, looking good, not on the shoulder. That's what we want to see.
How's that look to you? Look like a 4610 with a teeny tiny cut too. Let's go see if it works. Well, did we do a good job? Yes, indeed we did. Nice, excellent. So we have the working key for this lock now. Time to reassemble. So in theory, that should work. So if I close this, yeah, I can turn both ways. I should be okay. Pull the key out, we're all right. Got our old surplus lock here now with keys. How about that? Okay, so now this could be a return to service in the field or, you know, in the case of the kind of work we do, my pen testing team and I would now have keys to come back and reuse this lock as many times as we wanted to. Hopefully this was educational. Hopefully you understand measuring of pins, cutting of keys. You know, it's, every little system's different. Every time you're doing something new, you're approaching something you haven't seen, there's the opportunity to screw it up. Uh, God knows the reason I wanted to make all these copies and try this a few times was because sometimes we run into these. Sometimes you run into non-key removable, NKR, or we would just say key retaining American locks, not bypassable. If you get them open once, picking or otherwise, you don't want to have to do it again. Decipher the key, make the key, come back anytime you need to with that key. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, if you like this, uh, what can I give away on this one? Uh, let's give away DDC. Let's give away a set of pinning tweezers and one of the new steel uh, DDCs. That will be the, uh, the link in the giveaway. You know, you sign up, uh, you, I tell you by email, you won, you give me an address. Hopefully it's domestic. This one, I wouldn't matter if this was international for me because, you know, thin stuff goes in an envelope. But maybe, maybe, maybe you get the European or the Australian version of the direct, uh, the Devious Decoder card because we are working on those. So fingers crossed, if, uh, if I do your drawing and I already exist, maybe you get one of those. In the meantime, uh, enjoy what you're doing. Learn from us, learn from others, and wherever you are, stay safe out there.